Hello guys, here we are. I'm working on my tin factory right now. And one of the centrifuges just got done, so I haven't actually seen this thing when the centrifuges are releasing all the materials, so this is the first time glance at this for me. So as you can see, this diamond pipe just uh, brings the things that aren't tin and puts it into this chest. The things that are tin go into here and get crafted back into uh, more of these empty, what do you call it, canister things. This looks so cool. So basically this makes a net profit of 8 tin every time. So now all these are going to head on over across the roof and into this barrel where they'll be filled with lava and sent back into the centrifuges. Let's see, is there anything I can do to- wait a minute. Why isn't this pipe speeding it up? That's weird. You know what, I bet it's this redstone signal. That's probably what it is. I bet you the redstone t signal uh, turns off the gold pipe. But you know, whatever, I mean, they're getting there. But I can still make this better. If I just do that there, and there. Now I bet that would work better. But now all the tin cans are uh, heading on over to this barrel, so I might as well start turning this thing on. And, for, and uh, I need this engine to stay blue, which is why I had it off before, just so it doesn't overload this machine. And then it would just overload the, the, uh, the uh, centrifuges anyway, which is why I keep this thing running so slowly. Because, I mean, you know, I could always just pump more lava in and get more engines, but then I only have space for eight centrifuges here. And, you know, this is going to be pretty good. And here we got the tin cans arriving, so... And I also noticed that these things tend to update very badly. It takes a long time. But anyway, I just wanted to show this off. It's working very nicely. And I am going to get infinite tin from this. And I don't know if I showed this off before, but this is my uh, nether power plant. It fills up the carts with, with some uh, mine carts with energy and sends them off to wherever I choose through the Mistycraft portals. For example, he was dead 99's house. Looks like, yep, that one's empty, so it's going back to get charged. And just wait here for a little, a few seconds, and it will come back and teleport right onto that spot and start unloading its energy with this energy unloader. Then he's got uh, MFE set up here. Oop, there you go. It's coming back. Then, as you can see, it charges up the MFE, and then it'll just head back. So when the cart goes through here, it lands on this spot. It gets loaded up with energy, and it heads on off to its next destination. And that one's for my house. And this one is for me to set up a future spot, and I can always just expand this farther that way. Let's see, anything else? Well, there's just a bunch of geothermal generators over here. Nothing too special about that. There's two pumps, we're in the nether, and it is taking the lava from the nether very slowly, so I think we're going to be here for a long time. So anyway, that was just this uh, geothermal power station and my new tin factory. I'm loving it, I think it's awesome. Alright, so um, that's what I wanted to show off for right now, so I'll do a little jump cut until I'm doing something cooler. Hey guys, I just upgraded the uh, tin factory here. It is working better than it did before. I can now let this engine uh, charge up fully and pump out these cans because if this, if this thing gets full, it'll just loop back around. It's a great system. Anyway, this thing, hmm. Wondering if I need another redstone engine to uh, keep pumping this lava. It might be okay. Might. I'll have to keep watching it. Oh well, the nice thing about this place is that right under here, there's a world anchor. Which basically means the chunks in this immediate area are always loaded. Even if I'm not online or, or I'm somewhere far away do, doing something else, these chunks stay loaded. So this factory is on 24-7 as though I'm standing right here. So I'm expecting to get tons of tin. 
I'm looking forward to it because, you know, you always need tin. Anyway, just a few byproducts, some pyrite, wolfram, that's actually pretty good, and some gold, which I already have lots of, so it doesn't really matter. So, I'm actually going to show you the quarry next, I think. It's a massive one. So, see you in just a sec. So, here we are at the quarry. And, you know what, I just got this thing set up to one of these solar panels, I just stole it from my roof. And, six more just regular, boring solar panels. But it also keeps the back box just at net zero. So it's been like this for hours. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, it's set. Then here's the massive 64 by 64 hole it's digging. The cobble is basically, I filled up these barrels a long time ago and it's just pouring out right now. Ooh, a lot of cobble. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, show off my quarry. It's going to get me tons of stuff. It's already got me coal, which I can use to make diamonds. Iridium. That's really awesome. Did not know that Iridium spawned in the overworld. I thought it was just nether, but apparently it does. And Iridium is also really, really useful because I need it for a mass fabricator. Anyway, with a matter fabricator, uh, I can basically build the awesome solar panels and pretty much anything else that I want. So, this is the first step. I got a piece of Iridium. I'm happy about that. Kind of wish I'd gotten the ore, though, so I could uh, macerate it down into two, into, uh, two of these. But, oh well. One's still better than zero. So, let's see. Anything else I need to show off? I think there is, but I can't remember what it was. I know I was going to show off something, but I can't... Well, I made a, that, but that's not interesting. Hmm. Alright, well, I can't really remember. Just, this is my updated valuables chest. If you're wondering why it's different, it's because USDead99 decided to AFK right here. And not before setting it up so creepers could theoretically wander inside the house while he was AFKing right here next to my valuable chests. Uh, yeah. So he owed me a lot of stuff, and he paid me a lot of stuff. The only thing I'm missing is I'm still down on the rubies. And I lost a bunch of machine parts, but I'm replacing those, so no big deal. So that's just what I wanted to show for right now, and I will see you in just a little bit. Hey guys, here we are. We're in the nether right now. I'm just hunting for some iridium so I can make a matter fabricator because those are awesome. Plus with a matter fabricator you can get infinite, di infinite diamonds. Slowly, but infinite still. So I just need two more iridium ores and I can actually make it. So it might be this episode, it might not be. Depends. Because iridium is pretty hard to find here in the nether. I mean, it's, it's here. I've already found two right now. But, you know, it takes a while to find. And it, this is obviously newly generated terrain over here. My backpack doesn't run out of juice. Hmm. Alright, looks like it's only about half dead. So, uh, I'll jump cut to when I find the next iridium ore. Should be laying around here somewhere. It feels like I always find it near lava. Which I guess is true of everywhere in the nether. So, see you in just a sec. Hey guys! I uh, haven't actually found the Iridium yet, but I found something else cool that I really want to grab. Oop, got the spawner, got the spawner, run, 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 run. Alright, well I have the blaze spawner, so I'm going to be bringing this thing back to my base. First, just got to drop it off in here somewhere for a sec. Now we head on. We're over here, probably. So, uh, note to self, I'm leaving this thing up here. 